and welcome back. We're moving into our final segment for today and we're talking about a special exhibition entitled Carts and Carrier Cycles, the Leads in the 20th Century Man-Powered Machines. Joining us for this conversation, we have a civil on engineer, Ian Morrison, and we also have curator, Ilona Smiling. Good morning and, and welcome, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Now, let's talk about where did this idea come from to actually look at carrier bike and carrier carts and everything else? Well, it started about two and a half years ago. I took my first picture on the Northern Highway. It was a picture of a collapsed cart, a guy trying to take some old metal to the recycle shop, obviously for sale. And it was just such a moment. I had my phone and I took that picture and it kind of snowballed from there. I kind of went into a mode of just discovery, research, and trying to figure out, okay, why is it, what, what was it like before and what it's like now, because there has been a change in the types of carts that are available today as compared to the past. Now, you have on uh, set here, we have the in Creole carrier bike, but that's yep. not something that we see around um, much anymore. Why, why is that the case? Has it just gone out of production or gone out of necessity? I think um, a little bit of both. It's not as readily available, but um, you still have them for sale if you really need one from uh, Quan's trading. But what happened is that um, the goods and services now, the goods are being delivered by vehicles, so it's quicker, the city is much larger. So there is a need to move the goods, goods much, quick, much quicker. So the carrier bike kind of phased out because they used to use it to uh, transport groceries and a sack of flour, a sack of onion, a sack of potato. But they also had a lot of incidents where they tip over because they were very <laughs> front heavy. So especially if you had eggs on it, <laughs> as you will see in one of the photographs. No. Ian, let me ask you, uh, in terms of putting together this exhibit along uh, with Ileona, um, how did you go about doing your research, um, knowing the different types of carts that were used? There are those, obviously, that we have seen within our lifetime, but there are others, I'm sure, that are even more dated than that. And uh, understanding how they came about in the first place. Okay, I think, um, again, what started is that with, with that cart, I might, again, the memory just keep coming back. For yeah. some reason, that's the first picture, um, <laughs> photograph. For some reason, I paid attention in the 70s, and I can't figure out why, but I knew the details. I could have been an old board carpenter, but <laughs> they had skills. They, they were actually trade that built these carts. And I kind of went back in time, and I spoke to a number of persons that really shared shared unselfishly with me, and I kind of reconstructed what happened. There is no, no information out there that put yeah. it together. The photographs are hard to find, but I've been very lucky, and people are sharing with me, and I think with this, it will be even better. Mm -hmm. And in terms of putting together the exhibit? That was a very long process. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time Mr. Morrison came, um, well, before that, my boss, uh, at the museum, she told me that you know Mr. Morrison wants to do an exhibition. He said she said that he says he has everything in order, all the book is written, he has all the photos. So I said, okay, good. So I just have to put it up. And then when I met with Mr. Morrison, and I saw all the photos, I was like, um, some of them are very blurry. <laughs> what will we do? <laughs> so I had to eliminate a lot of the photos because after hearing what exactly it is that he wanted to do some of the photos weren't capturing what is it that he wanted to show uh -huh. and then for a lot of the older photos I had to go and use Photoshop like this one for instance it was black and white extremely blurry so I had to be creative to make it pop because you couldn't see the cart before so that was just one of the things that I had to do so that people could get the idea of the photo. And then in terms of carts and tools, that was another thing we had kind of like a little back and forth because again, I'm trying to make the exhibition a way that people can understand it and Mr. Ian would come and say, this has to go in, this has to go in. And I'd be like, this makes no sense. <laughs> people won't understand what's happening. And he's like, 
yes the people will <laughs> okay so so yeah it was base it came down to basically understanding what he had for his vision mm -hmm. and trying to make it a way that's comprehensible for anybody who would walk through so yeah. now even funny. bicycle carts it's not something that we see around as much as before but we noticed that there has been a resurgence in the use especially for fruit vendors mm -hmm. and little knickknacks here and there is that a is that a re but they're mostly uh, metal ones as opposed to hand constructed well what happened there's been a transition from these old cars remember they were, these were at a time when you had a sawmill and lumber yards in Belize readily available. So the, the waste material that I'm thinking they used to use, they used to go to the sawmill. It wasn't a lumber yard necessarily, a sawmill that sell lumber to. And they had the availability of this lumber. And also the bicycles at that time. Remember we had the rudge, the rally, and what they did, they cut the bicycles in half. When apparently when they get old and they didn't have any more use for it. And they reconstructed the metal part that was imported, probably from England. And they attached it to what? was a combination I call the hybrid or the Cadillac. The hybrid was you had the two wheel carts that you're seeing right here. This, this was is a two wheel cart. The two yeah. wheel cart, if you notice that the front of it is the box that is on a three wheel cart and a bicycle cart. And what they did, they added the bicycle to it. So as the bicycles became popular and eventually got old, there was a creation. They were creative, the ingenuity behind it because, and they combined two, but this offered something that the two wheel didn't offer. You had more, so, more capacity, heavier load, you could have ridden it, you could ride it. So what happened is that this offered them a longer range and quicker after you deliver your load, you could ride back to your, to your place and get ready for the next delivery. So that made a good blend. And heavier? Heavier load. So this because is before the bicycle cart? This, I am assuming because we have a 1910 photograph with one of these carts, you okay. will see it up there. And I, it was before the bicycle carts, but I think, again, it got unpopular because the cities started to get a bit, little bit bigger uh, geographically. And um, again, it was slower, smaller. Mm -hmm. Did you reconstruct these? Yes, what I did, I had to build a, the two-wheel cart, the one-wheel cart that is at the exhibit, and also the, I built the two-wheel, the one-wheel, and something, oh, the four-wheel cart which we will discuss because that is really the prize of all the carts. And now, the rest you were able to source? Yes, I sourced the bicycle cart and the carrier bike. That's now, fantastic. Now, I, I have one more question sure. though, please. Um, because we saw the photographs flashing and we can't keep up with it, but one I did notice is that there are some carts with uh, wooden wheels. Yes, absolutely. In, in the early days, remember it was only wood was a timber, the only thing available. Mm -hmm. So in the exhibit you will see a wooden wheel, which is from a, probably from a harsh drawn cart, but the concept was the same. They had the, the ones for the, for the bicycle, it was something like this, they cut it or they made it from the strips, but it was something like this, cut from a single piece of lumber. This was actually for a, this is for a four wheel cart. Mm -hmm. And what happened in the past, they used to wrap it with, with car tires. But since then, the car tires now comes with a metal, they're radial tires, metal radial, and you clearly can't cut that again. But so, um, we had to compromise, we had to improvise, and we did this out of a bicycle tire. Mm -hmm. But it's the same, same so idea. So that's what they would have done? They would yes. have, did they smooth out the wood underneath? Yes, they yeah, had To probably, make it more round? Yes, they probably had some manual machine to cut it, mm -hmm. but um, they tried to get it as wrong as possible. These things weren't perfect. Yeah. But it worked for them, and it, sometimes it, it broke down in the street, but in all in all, it did what they were supposed to do. It was a means of earning an income. And um, it it is. yeah, at a time when um, the city, it was much smaller, but um, transportation was easier because it was in a confined area. Mm -hmm. This is what we have as a, and they used to make this out of very hard wood. This one is actually bullet tree, if you know about it. It is a bullet tree stuff in a bullet, but you could hardly nail through this. And this is what the original would look like. And at the exhibit, we had the saw that they used to cut these mm -hmm. with. It was a hand saw. We also saw. have the stumps on the, the exhibit. The stumps that it came from. But the box were made out of what they call mostly yemery. Yemery is a light wood that they use for uh, farm work in Belize right now. It's easy to nail, easy to cut, and it don't split. It lasts very long, even if, in, um, if it's exposed to the elements. So it was easy for them. Now, a lot of what we're looking at, um, you're talking about carts that were used for transportation, but I remember growing up that 
carts uh, for children was also uh, a big thing. Did you also uh, look at the carts for children um, that were made more for recreational purposes? Uh, not in this one, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying there will be another one. But <laughs> I'm giving away. There, no, we did not because we want to focus on the economic driver of the middle okay. 20th century and man-powered machines because they were very unique. They, they were at a time where they actually provided um, the services that were needed um, and they responded because we had the vehicles coming in and that was very expensive. We had piped in water in the 50s but that was limited to a few who that could afford it. We had standpipe and these guys used to use that the carts to so transport this one now. Uh -huh. like the three wheel well there the three wheel or the four wheel or even the two wheel mm -hmm. um, so to the transport the water from the standpipe and you pay five cents and you primarily to water <laughs> water <laughs> if you notice there's a water bucket in there we don't have any normal buckets here so prime it was water yeah <laughs> yes but uh, it, they, they used to transport and as a means of income and a livelihood. So let's, let's talk about the evolution of uh, the carts and the carrier. We started with what, the four wheel? I, Do no, we know? I think what, I, what I've seen from the, the limited information available, I think we started with the two wheel. And which is this? Which is this one, the two wheel that was there from the early, if you look at some of these old movies too, you see the two wheel carts in mm -hmm. there. Actually, I've, I, found, I found information way back um, in the 19, sorry, the 19, 1600s, that someone in, um, in France actually invented the first the three-wheel cart, uh, quadriplegic, and then some French guys came along and adjusted it and did the three-wheel and the two-wheel carts, mostly for, I think, for, for food vending. And what happened, we had the one-wheel cart in the early 1900s, and then as we got up into the 1950s, I think after the World War, because I think at the time of the World War, the World War II, metal was scarce so you didn't have a lot of bicycles anything except war material was being made from metal after that I, we started to see the emergence of the bicycle these were the Rog, the Phillips that came from England Hercules the Hercules carrier bike and I think by the 60s came around they were 10 years old they started to get old and people started to get inno innovative we have carts from the 60s if at the exhibit we had this young man Mr. Arthur, Arthur Arnold he has three generations of a cart. It's from about 1968. So it's in him, named Arthur, the son, and his son, and the grandson. So I'm assuming it came about around the 60s where they put together the two wheel and the bicycle, and they came up with what I call the Cadillac, Cadillac of the carts, the three, -wheel, the three wheel carts, which was very innovative for that, for that time. Now, Ian, what made you uh, come to the or, or assume that people would actually be interested in looking at carts? Well, I don't know. I just start off with a, with a passion, my own passion. And I, I couldn't find anything. And every time I show someone or, or I spoke to someone, they say, oh, yes, I remember that. I remember Frisco. I remember Shea Ice. They used to sell mm -hmm. that. I remember Papi. I remember Mr. Dave. I remembered. And eventually, In my. Park, Sorry? Mr. Parks. Mr. Parks, he had a four wheel cart. And yeah. if you know him in the 80s, I think he was a wrong yes. until If you're behind that cart at any time and if that cart breaks down, <laughs> you will stay there and you will be blowing your hand forever. But he will repair that cart in the street. <laughs> <laughs> he will yep. to the side. So, so. You, you had mentioned earlier that you uh, wanted to address the four wheel cart. Uh, is this perhaps your, your favorite of the, of the uh, carriers? It is. Mm -hmm. It is because what happened, they had to put the most in the four-wheel cart. It was totally made most from- Most work? The most work. Mm -hmm. And the, I guess to think through, to put it together, how did it hold together? Why is it that the, the center beam is extended well beyond the front of the cart? And those were for good reasons. And how is it that they actually had these wheels? Why is it, why is it that they use it in this way? They could have used it in another way. And also that these men had a creativity and they were skilled, skilled tradesmen. These carts were built very, very strong. So the curiosity is because we had timber in Belize that mm -hmm. was unique because the other Caribbean islands didn't have timber, it was more sugarcane. So they took that and because it was total local, it was kind of unique to Belize. I didn't, I'm didn't. i not sure that the other islands have it mm -hmm. or had it in the past, but what happened is that I couldn't find anything. 
but I know these cards were popular. So, so, so we, we have a picture of one there, so yeah, people can know exactly what you're talking about when we cart. say the four-wheel cart. We'll get that up right now. And what is the mechanics behind the extended two front wheels and uh, even the angle of the, of the handle itself? Oh, okay, because that is solely, I guess, from their intuition, from an engineering perspective. They used to put the load from the cart a little bit more to the back. So when they're pushing it, they have this, this rope that usually would pass under the cart and they use it to steer it. So if the load is on the back, uh -huh. it's a bit lighter on the front. And they, they have a, had a bolt or a nail, whatever they could find, yeah. and it would make it a bit easier for, the, for them to turn the front wheel. So this was used to transport mostly goods to the wharf. So you're saying that there's a rope? There's a rope. See the rope? I see, there, yeah, I see yeah, it now in, in their hands. And yes. that's connected to the front wheel? To the front and wheel. And that's your steering. steering. That is your steering wheel. So You've never seen one of these? I have never seen a four-wheel cart. I, I have it on that. display. Yeah. The, you have to come and yeah. see. And, now, it has and, the and that's actually one of the questions I wanted to ask because Obviously, some people in Belize will remember, maybe not all, but most of these cards um, and remember what they're used for. Uh, how about those who grew up in a generation where they only saw metal carts? Um, will they be able to, to... Yeah, or yeah. bicycle carts as well. The metal um, bicycle carts. Yeah. Uh, is it something that they will be able to, to walk in and get a very good understanding as to uh, how these were made, what they were used for? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when I was doing this, I, I made a speech yesterday about it. Uh, when I was doing the exhibition at first, I thought, why are we doing an exhibition on carts and cars? It makes no sense. I can't relate. But <laughs> the more and more I got into it, the more and more I realized that all of these people are kind of our unsung heroes. We see them every day, and sometimes we take them for granted. I know I definitely did before this exhibition, you know. If I'm going, if I'm trying to go over the bridge and I see a car, I'm like, oh my God, this car always the harass. It's in the way. But then you kind of, you kind of start to get a respect for them. You realize exactly what it is that they're doing. I mean, there are many times these carts are selling fruits. They're bringing it to you. There, sometimes you can't go all the way over to the other side to get your fruits and vegetables, but you have them in their three wheel carts. Yank, honking the horns and saying fruits we have one on new road we say morning mommy because that's all she says morning mommy and you know she sells <laughs> her fruits and I never really on I never thought about how much work goes into just powering that little car you know all day you have to exercise your legs I mean we take it for granted when we just go ride a bicycle like oh yeah it's exercise but for these people it's their livelihood it's their work now yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask one thing because obviously I know the focus is on man-powered machines but we also saw at the end of um, this same era you also had the mule and carts with Ramsey mm -hmm. etc and I think a lot of people remember perhaps the mule and cart did the evolution go from man-powered to the mule and cart eventually or vice versa where people kind of could not afford a mule so they they opted to go man powered i think i think it happened simultaneously because again we they had their own role and function because the small carts or the carrier bike was used to deliver goods to the mostly to the shops the corner shops when you look at the mule and cart they could have taken much more so if, if you were selling if you wanted for wholesale large boxes then they would have taken the the, the goods from the wharf to the store by that time, remember, we start to, uh, the, the city expanded into Cinderella town, and you had grocery shops, so you had to move the goods in larger quantities. It probably wouldn't have been efficient and cost effective if they continued to use these little carts to carry one or two boxes. So the mule and cart had it, roll, had, had it, rolled, had it rolled at that time, and also the, the carrier bike or the carts. So they operated simultaneously. You, you said something that I just want to follow up on, because that... You know, we use terms in Belize, like people say you come from a courthouse wharf, and the older people might know exactly what that meant. But you're talking about boats coming in and goods being docked, particularly in that area, and then having to be transported throughout the city. Correct. So that was the purpose of the carts, more or less? Well, they, for the Newland cart, that was the purpose. They were moving larger amount of goods. Unlike with the carrier bike and the bicycle cart, there were more within the city moving from a store, they used to transport furniture, construction material, and groceries. 
The carrier bike itself was used primarily for transporting groceries from Bodies or from Romax. They, they put a box in the front and you used to order your groceries. Again, it was for those in the middle to upper income. You order your groceries from Bodies and they deliver it to your house on a carrier bike. So again, along with that, the, 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 the bicycle cart was used primarily for um, the more the movement of furniture and construction materials. If you, if you could remember, when you go to any one of these stores, Augusta Corner or along North, uh, North Front Street, you would see a cart, especially during mm -hmm. the Christmas time. You could rent. You could rent the cart, and it's much more affordable. These guys will ride across town for $2. And, and the you, Mennonite furniture, too. The Mennonite furniture, even today. Mm -hmm. So you could see, like, Mr. Mr. Um, Patterson that has a cart um, right now, the prettiest cart in Belize, very nice, a green cart. He's always out by brother, I mean, Habiton, Habiton Cemetery Road. And you have Pelon always over by the other side on the north side by the Mennonites and the lower end of uh, North Front Street near to, near to um, the Bell China Bridge. Mm -hmm. So there, they normally have their geographic area that they operate in. And it is, it is interesting to see how it has transitioned, but also the transition in the material that the cart is made from, from a wood to metal. And that brings me to the question, what does uh, the work and the investigation that you've put into this mean to you as an engineer? And I mean that I, I, I uh, look at it, for example, like uh, how people look at the architecture that the Mayas were able to create, the functionality and the ingenuity. Um, is it a similar scenario for you to look at how these persons who created these cards weren't necessarily trained to find out how the mechanics would be best, but they found a way to be able to be effective in a time where mobility was necessary. Yes, and I think that is a big part of the attraction to it from an engineering perspective first, but you cannot, you cannot separate it from, the, from a socioeconomic standpoint because these men actually provided that service that was absolutely necessary during a time. They saw it, they saw an opportunity with it, and so while I'm trying to look at the engineering aspect, because that is where it started, that mm -hmm. is my curiosity, uh, it, it's hard to separate it from providing that service and also being an entrepreneur on their own. So uh, yes, it's a little bit of both. So, and the utilitarian aspects of, of it, even though it was a kind of an art to build a cart. Mm -hmm. so, Looking at, I guess, when Marlene is talking about the engineering aspect, because even the, the, the technology that evolved with, you know, knowing that they could put a nut and put, you know, a, a bolt and a nut yes. so that they could control that. I remember having somewhere it would, with, with the weight, if you didn't have the, the nut on top, it would pop off. Correct. So you'd have that technology over time that people understood that you put a heavy duty nut mm -hmm. so you could rotate but not just put a big nail yes. so that it could, you know, be top heavier I don't know, and come off, right? Yeah. So from an engineering perspective, when you look at all of that and the utilitarian aspect of it and how things develop over time to become more what is considered to be the norm for the creation of these things. Well, again, if you look at, you could look at two aspects. You could look at the four-wheel cart and you look, could look at the two-wheel cart and the bicycle cart. I think the, the biggest revolution happened with the two-wheel cart and the bicycle, where they put, and like I call it, the Cadillac of the carts, where they put these two together. For whatever reason, whoever thought, I have no information, who, who came up with that idea first? It had to be somebody where had the creativity and said, you know what, we could do this, and what it meant and what it would have done for the, for the industry. But from, again, from that engineering perspective, just a hardcore engineer, I'm looking at the material is made from the size of the lumber. I mean, these carts were loaded up with probably three, four hundred pounds. These men were in shape, not big, but very defined because it was all manual labor. Mm -hmm. So it offered a healthy choice, exercise, and also a means of making money. So while I focus on the engineering because that is my passion, it's hard for me to get away from the socioeconomic part of it. Yeah. Now I have one question because it nags me when I see this particular contraption. <laughs> How much water is actually delivered at the end of the trip? Because we didn't have paved streets back then. Well, we had <laughs> paved Cop streets in the old, in the old part uh -huh. of Belize City, the, the, um, the Baghdad Street, the yeah. South Street, Tigris Street. These streets have been paved. Amara Avenue, Euphrates Avenue. 
but in the <laughs> in North Front Street was always paved, and that whole area of Pixar Street, Victoria Street, that area they were confined to that area. It's not until we expanded into Cinderella oh. Plaza and Westland Eve, and then you had unpaved streets for a little while. But the streets were narrow if you look downtown Belize City. So it was relatively easy for them to move. This is actually a, a kind of a transformation of the four wheel cart because this guy actually had the probably had the the two wheels. He had the box, but he didn't have two for the front. Yeah. So he was creative and innovative, and he put one, and it aff afforded him. He had a job with it. So he, up to the day we got this cart, he used to he, tra he transported water delivering, water, delivering water for people. And what happened if you have a drum in your yard? They used to get it from the standpipe because the standpipe was low. They folded the 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 galvanized bucket, or it would have been a bucket made from uh, the margarine pan, blue band margarine. It was a square container, and they used to put a stick across it, I put two nails. And they would carry that. They fold the drum in the in the four wheel cart, and then they deliver it, and then they pour the water and carry it into your yard. It was manual, healthy labor. But again, we didn't have TV. There was not no other distraction, <coughs> no video games, nothing to keep you. In. And it was necessity. Now, it was necessity. Yeah. One one other thing I I want to ask because obviously you're talking about the human aspect of these machines as well and the interaction. Growing up um, in Belize City, one of the things that I knew is that quite a number of personalities revolved around uh, people and their cart. You know, whether it was parks or other, did you look at that aspect as well? Because you have some of those people who are well known because they were utilized by the wider um, community. You know, so they were the carriers, but everybody knew, like if you said Parks, everybody know who Parks is, or Ramsey, because he was utilized. So did you get a, a chance to look at that aspect, the personalities that also developed with this uh, industry, so to speak? I did, and every time I spoke to someone, they kind of jogged my memory. In those days, if you could remember Mas Man, uh -huh. he was the most feared person. He was a gentle person, but because he wore this mask, Everybody was afraid, afraid of him. He used to be on the corner of um, Pong Yard Bridge, Bridge, right where I think HLs had a burger, sh burger shop. And then he used to also go on his cart and sell. But also you had Dave. Dave was a guy that we know now had Alzheimer's. He was always in the cart. He had about four carts. Um, he used to rent the carts from those days. Just like how you rent a bicycle, you could rent a cart. And again, he was very popular. And then we had the most famous person, Mentos. If you may know Mentos, and don't say the wrong thing to him, because if in a creole, he may trace you off. And he always had this swagger where he pushed off his cart and had this special way how he jump on after. So people <laughs> reminded me of some Mentos, of these guys, yeah, Mentos, no. Dave. I know um, we have Mr. Patterson that has taken over, and my friend Pelon that is on the north side. Hmm. But I would and like people eventually started to pimp out their carts? Um, I think for only for the September celebrations, you yeah. used to see it. Uh, and now that you have uh, Mr. Patterson, his mm -hmm. cart is really nice, have reflectors, have a trinket box on the box. So it was, they used to, they used to, they used to paint the carts and write their name on it. Mm -hmm. And it was a time when they were very proud of, of their cart. Yeah. But I would like to say a little too that uh, Miss Smiling is very modest and I didn't make it, make it easy for her mm -hmm. because I took all my pictures with my camera and I said, but Mr. Luna, a photograph is a photograph, man. We could use that. And I said, but Mr. Morrison, if I blow this up little, it won't be all pixelated. But she was very gentle with me. She's saying it mildly because I was not easy. I want to put in everything, even some <laughs> things. I said, man, you have to see this, you have to see that. And people will remember. But um, in the end, she did an excellent job in blending the carts and also the, the equipment, the tools that were used, especially the tools. They were, these were all handmade tools and the license plate. We have a license, old license plate on yeah, the front. Yeah, that one. Yes. So she actually bring, brought this thing <coughs> to life. And I was really looking into a box. I was done on my carts and building my carts and getting my carts. And she, she came, came along and she really fleshed out this thing and brought it to life, what you will be seeing in the exhibit. So mm -hmm. I must say many thanks, many thanks to her. The exhibit her. opened yesterday? It opened yes. yesterday. And, and how long is it going to be on display? Three weeks? It will say? be until the end of the month. <coughs> okay. And uh, you could visit anytime, I think, between 9 and 4. Please 
um, visit the Bliss Center for the Performing Arts. Um, I think you'll have a lot of throwback, if you remember. And if you're a young person, you'll see where these cards came from. Now you're seeing the metal cards from probably our neighbor, neighbors, Chetamal, uh, Mexico, and Guatemala, or Honduras. But again, the thing is to preserve this history and now have a document, documentation, documented the history, the research. And what will happen 50 years from now, we'll have something that is in some order that we could look back and preserve, preserve yeah. our colorful history and culture. Well, kudos to both of you in putting this together, and we, I'm sure many people would want to go and see and uh, have that flashback that you speak of. And of course, schools can take the children to have them learn about an era that they weren't able to witness for themselves. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right. We're going to go ahead and take our final break, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned.